Welcome everybody to the first in a series of videos on how to use the new software for the new total addressable output ports. First thing you're going to need to do is go to zebsboards.com and up under manuals and files on the main page, download the config utility download that's listed. While you're here, you might as well also grab the installation manual. Now the config utility download is 700 megabytes so it takes a while so I've already downloaded that. Once the download is complete we can close out and we can go to where we've actually downloaded the file and right click on it, go down to properties and down here you'll probably see that it needs to be unblocked. I've already unblocked it, but you'll effectively you'll tick a box here, click apply, click OK, and everything will be good. At which point you can double click on it and extract it. Select where you want to just extract it to and let it go. Now this utility does not need to be installed on your cabinet to work. There are files in this package that you will use for installing on your cabinet, like your DOF installation and some INI files and whatnot. But for the main installation of your configuration utility, you might as well put it on a system where you can comfortably sit and be able to work without having to stress about standing in front of your machine for an hour at end if that's how long you plan on being at it. So for our purposes, we're going to install it on the desktop, not installed in the compute in the cabinet. And we're going to use the config utility folder that's in the package. The first step being to install the actual package, the, the software for LibreOffice. For our intents and purposes, we're going to use the 64-bit version. I have included the x86 32-bit version as well, but that's not what most people are actually going to use. So we're going to come down. We're going to, in my case, I'm going to do a custom. A typical would just install with the defaults, which is all that you need. But for the sake of what I'm doing, I want to change my installation directory only because I have a second drive in here that I use for this sort of thing. And I want to put it in the LibreOffice folder. We'll click Next. We'll click Through. And it'll probably take a couple of minutes to install. once we have given it the authorization to do so. Let's close out some windows here in the background. We'll allow it to do the installation. And we'll use the miracle of fast forwarding from this point to get us through the installation. So there we are. We've finished installing. We'll close that out. And the second thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start the program. Is. And we'll let it do its first run. Move it over so you can see what's going on here. So now we can close that out because we've seen that the program is actually installed. Second step that we need to do is go back to our downloads, go to the step two folder, and this is where 
the magic actually happens. First step we want to do is we want to install the font that I used because I never thought about the fact that it wasn't smart to use a font that not everybody has, but I've included the font for you. So we'll install the font. And then we're going to grab the ZBTAO folder, which holds all of our fo files, plus a backup of the database that it originally ships with. And we're going to place that somewhere on our computer, which is going to be convenient. In our case, for this demonstration, I'm using my D drive. And once we've found the permanent home for those files, then what we want to do is grab our dashboard and we want to create a shortcut on the desktop by choosing send to and then go over to desktop, create shortcut and just create a desktop icon that we'll be able to use to get us into the package as quickly as we want to get into it whenever we want to open it. This is what you're going to use to open the software utility whenever you need to. You just double click on that. And you'll be presented with that window. Obviously, you won't have to drag it back and forth between screens. I do. Anyways, at this point, well, right now what we have installed are all the files. If we click on this box, we can see that it'll take us into the varying screens. Closing it out takes us back to the dashboard. It's going to be as simple as that. Right now, the package comes pre-configured with the original database in it. You kind of want to register that database to the main program in order to be able to make your changes in the configuration screens and then import them into the Excel file that ultimately exports them as an INI file. In order to do that, we go up under View and we come down to Data Sources. Now you'll see in Data Sources, OBD Config Tool. We're going to open that up and we're going to check registered databases. What you want to do is you want to make sure that this registration here, if it exists, is actually linking to where you put the files. In our case, it isn't, so we're going to delete it. Yes, and we're going to add a new one. We're going to browse to where we put the database, which in our case was here in the D drive. And we're going to select the database from the D drive. We're going to open it. We're going to leave it named the same as it defaults to and click OK. And now we've registered our database location so that any changes we make in that database, we can then import in without having to go in hunting and pecking and searching for a file. So at this point, we can close out the data sources and we're done. Now to check to make sure that this is working the way we want it to, we'll open the configuration viewer. With the configuration viewer open, we'll take a look in the drop down and we see that all of our tables have shown up. So we'll just select one. In this case, I'm just selecting the default that tells you what everything does. And you click on the refresh button and we see that everything changed in our information on the screen. So we've registered our database, we have access to our database, 
that's all working fine. So we can close that out. We can come into the file generator. And the last thing we want to do for the sake of doing our setup is we want to import the database that we just downloaded into the machine. In order to do that, into sorry, into this file. In order to do that, once again, we go up to View, down to Data Sources. Click on the Config tool, click on Tables, and the Config Data. And it automatically brings it in. So this here is your database. This here is your spreadsheet. At this point, this database is not necessarily all imported into this spreadsheet. So we come down to the bottom of the screen and we click on Config Data. We click on the green button, which highlights the area that we want to import the database into. And we click on this square in the corner to select our database. At this point, if we go to this button here that's labeled Data to Text, click it, and it brings in the information from our database into our spreadsheet so that we can actually, when we generate our INI file that runs DOF, it does it based on the latest changes that we made to the database. It's an important step to get used to. If you forget to do that, you'll be making changes in your INI file through the INI configuration screen. But when you come to this screen to generate the files, it won't be actually updating any information because you haven't yet imported it in. Now we've completed that, so we can click anywhere in that box and anywhere in this box to deselect our highlighting. And since we're done with our database, we can go back to data sources, click the button, and we're back to using that. We're going to save the changes we made because we imported a new database. And we're going to close out the window. And that's it, guys. The software package is up and running on your system. Next video that I do will be what the configuration viewer does and how you can manipulate some of your configurations. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.